and we're back. So that's uh, that's another one in the bag. I'm really happy with this one. I mean, you know, it's a bit of sweet video, but we have to, you know, celebrate him. I, I'm sure you wouldn't want people to be mopping around, and what better way than to celebrate his memory than a hundred watts of just unbridled fury. And I also used it on his bass. I used the same amp. I used the amp on his bass, and the uh, distortion pedal, the quad damage pedal. So, so now you know. And uh, it's actually I used the same speaker. Let's get to the gear. I use the same speaker that is going to be in my cabinets when I bring out my cabs and my uh, combo. I use the same speaker, so it's a little secret, which I'm not going to say. But speaking of secrets. What is the big secret of Celtic Frost? Is it the guitar? Is it the Marshall? Marshall's very important. Is it the boost, the pedal in front of it? A tube Screamer and a TS-10, they don't sound miles apart. You know, people say the TS-9 sounds better, but you know, they, there's, nothing, there's not that much between them. It's that 5% thing again. And uh, is it the speaker? No. But I think he, do, he does use, uh, back in the day, he used 75s and 65s. So, and I use 75s on this. What's the secret? The thing you never use, you metalheads, the tone control. The secret is you turn everything on the amp up to 10, apart from the volume, and you know, <laughs> within reason. You turn the treble, the bass, the mids, the, you crank the volume, you crank the distortion. You might not want to put the distortion on 10, depending on that amp you can, because it's a bass, it's a bedrock amp where you use it as a granite base to put your pedals on. So then it takes it, push the front end, and that's where the good stuff's come from. I just know from experience, you know. So, it's the, it's the, it's the tone control. It turns the tone control right the way off. If you did those settings, everything on 10, with no, with your tone on, you know, just just normal in volume on ten and tone on ten, that thing would you'd lose hair. The treble would just shave you, like it it's it wouldn't be good. But because he takes off, I call it push pull, because he takes off the all the the treble on the tone control on the guitar, then you've got that tone fighting with a muffled tone coming out of here. And it creates this really interesting uh, tight. You get less feedback and everything, and it's 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 a the whole thing is a contradiction because you have ridiculous amount of distortion, but you can hear everything that's going on because there's so much definition coming from the preamp section, from the EQ section. Sorry. So, and that is the big secret. You know, usually I go on these huge things. Oh, you have to mic it like this. You have to. You know, jump over a rainbow and you have to dig underneath this place where you've got to get the right metal in the frets. No, this is just the tone, the tone control. You can pretty much get a JCM100, a JVM, a anything with a crispy, crunchy, decent British tone with a pedal and just max everything out on the amp, turn that volume down, and you're going to be in Celtic Frostland. Because, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have... I don't like the pickups that he uses. I don't like the guitar he uses, you know, personally. And, you know, I was making fun of the Ibanez the other day. It's so ironic that it just happens to be my favorite uh, tone of all time, you know, in metal. So that's it. And uh, like I say, my, I think my equipment did me proud. Uh, I hope my playing was okay. I didn't copy a song in particular. I just did a, I just did a, a jam in the style of, you know, Celtic Frost. And uh, I had a good time doing it. So uh, I don't want to be too mopey about it. You know, he was a bloody brilliant agitator you know i saw him last time i saw him live he was ripping up a bible and throwing the pages into the crowd and it was just nonsense and it was fantastic you know he was that type of guy he just needles needles you uh, your perception of what's normal and what's right and uh, he's a twisted guy and i, I like that oh, so i'm sure he you know between him and tom g Warrior, i mean tom is such an idol of mine and he had the or I call it the blues. Right? He had a terrible upbringing. He was, his mother was an international smuggler. I don't think his dad hung around. And he was left on a farm as a child to fend for himself while she flew around the world. 
He was a child in a farm in the middle of nowhere with no money, hardly any food, and just, like, all he had was music. So it was almost like a being raised by wolves. Tom G. Warrior is the most metal person you can meet because he was forced into it. You know, if he had a decent childhood, there's no way his albums would be the way they are because he has seen the worst of people and he's seen, you know, he's been deprived of love at that early stage and that can twist you. And wonderfully, he's used it to twist his into something beauty, beautiful. I mean, his lyrics, his lyrics, I mean, metal, I never even know lyrics. I couldn't tell you the lyrics for every Testament album. And I've played those albums thousands, literally thousands of times. But with Celtic Frost, his lyrics make you think. Like, this is like 30 years old, this song, 20 years old. And his lyrics are like, you made these walls shine like divine marble, you know, and forced some. What was the other one? I think I have them um, up here somewhere. Yeah, you who made the ancient walls shine like divine marble. The unwanted breath through credence, a derelict shell in the desert, mesmerized. I mean, these lyrics, dude. What is that? I want to know what it's about. What? What's? What's murmur at the Megas, Megas spear, battered Carthaginian pride. What are Carthagians? Is this an old civilization? I was like, I'm thinking, what the hell is this song about? I want to know. If somebody knows what it's about, you, you uh, that, that's like 20 plus years of suffering, not knowing what it's about, but thinking that it's it's beautiful and it conjures images. And then you've got the music doing the other half and they called it avant-garde metal. Um, but it was just dark, yeah, good stuff. So I'm losing my voice, you know, uh, I went a bit, uh, I tried to do vocals. <laughs> nope. So that's it. So I hope you like it. Uh, please subscribe. Please like my videos. Like I've taken a big hit recently with my disastrous attempt at live streaming. And I, I don't think I got a, a subscription today. You know, I might have had two. And I was getting so many because everyone was loving the, the recent videos I did. And then pfft, down the toilet. So... That really helps me keep doing these vids and uh, obviously I've got my own stuff coming out soon in the near future and you can buy my pedal right now, the uh, $25 off for a couple of days and that would really help me out too and lots more to come. If you like this type of music, December, you're going to love the 12 days leading up to Christmas because I'm bringing up a uh, bit of a gimmick but it's called Desmember and it's the 12 days of Xmas. So it's going to be a black, extreme, metal advent calendar. So I'm only doing 12, not doing 25, but you know I'm going to open up the advent calendar and say a bat's face is going to be under it. And then I'm going to do one of those tunes. And then, you know, and death and all, all sorts of bands. And I can tell you all the bands I'm doing, but they're death and extreme black metal bands. 12 of them in December. Oh, here comes the uh, nervous breakdown. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I've been Circular Tone. Uh, rest in peace, Martin. You were a huge inspiration. I hope you, your family are taken care of, and uh, you'll you'll never die if we all have you in our thoughts. You know, happy travels. <laughs>